All right. So we're going to jumping into Sword Course Legends. Yes, some of my LARPing buddies may recognize this character. He's uh, Reginald Smythe, the angriest wizard ever. Anyways, uh, I've been making characters just to see what the, the character creation's like. Seeing as how I'm doing this for a video, I will go ahead and do a new one. But, uh, let's see here. So, it gives you a random, you know, character up front, which is fine. Uh, and then you can just sort of cycle through and see which ones you want to make. This is fairly familiar D&D territory. I kind of hope that in future expansions they add more class and race options. But, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. Uh, you got your cleric, your rogue, your wizard, wizard, paladin, ranger, fighter, and of course we're back to cleric. Um, and you gain companions as you go along. You can actually gain, you know, add your friends as companions too if they play the game. Sadly, I don't think any of my friends are playing the game right now. Because nobody likes me. It's true. Um, but, anyways, you got the races, elf, and then you got sub races. So, wood elf, drow, moon elf, sun elf, you know. And then you can dwarf, you get gold dwarf or shield dwarf. Halfling, lightfoot, or uh, strong heart. And if you do a little hover over that, you can see what the differences are. Like this one gets a plus two uh, dexterity, plus one constitution. And this one gets plus two dexterity, plus one charisma. And a d different natural ability. So that's kind of cool. That's neat. Um, you got your half elves that don't have sub races for, you know, which is fine. Uh, you got uh, humans, which apparently come in human and human um, it's human and human variant um, I kind of wish they had given those better names but whatever uh, you've got okay you've got the elf let's see dwarf halfling half elf and humans okay uh, and you have different backgrounds so, uh, and, you know, these give you some bonuses as well. Uh, gladiator, guild artisan, guild merchant, hermit, knight, noble, outlander, pirate, sage, sailor, soldier, spy, urchin, acolyte, charlatan, criminal, entertainer, folk hero, and back around. So those are your options, and of course you get the gender options, which affects no stats because why would it? I know, in old D&D, often did, but we're in a slightly more enlightened age, I guess. So, anyways, uh, the one I haven't played with, I, I, I did a little bit of toying with the rogue, and the rogues are cool because, you know, disarming traps is fun. Um... Wizards, they're kind of neat, but uh, uh, I currently already have one that I'm playing as a wizard, so I have not played a paladin yet in this, so it may be, end up being a paladin. As you go along, you pick up different companions, and so far I haven't run into a, a, a paladin companion. This doesn't mean that there won't be one, I just haven't run into one. And the ranger, again, I haven't run into one yet, so that might be an option. Um, fighter, fairly standard, uh, and of course the cleric and the rook. Now, um, I think, hmm, I think I'll go with, uh, a paladin this time. It's, uh, it's a classic, what can you say? Uh, I want to be a human. Hmm. Might be half elf. Uh, 
uh, immunity to sleep is nice. Um, charisma plus two. What's most important stats? Uh, the save proficiencies are wisdom and charisma, so that's compatible. Uh, sure, let's go with half health. Um, now, what background? Eh, I don't really like Gladiator as a background for uh, a paladin. Guild artisan, maybe? No. Guild merchant? Nah. Hermit? Hermit Paladin doesn't. Well, I don't know. You get a bonus to wisdom, and you know, raised in a monastery is fits that pretty good. So that that could work. Plus two radiant necrotic psychic damage dealt. Negative two radiant narcotic. Huh. Knight, which is kind of an obvious one. Uh, and then you're equipment a banner or other type of noble lord or lady whom you've given your heart in a chase sort of devotion um, nifty noble I can go noble but half elf noble yeah, could happen uh, get lots of extra starting gold uh, but no uh, bonuses to stats. The story on it would be good. Let's see. Outlander. Grew up in the wilds, far from civilization. So this is more of a barbarian background. Uh, gives you a constitution bonus. Pirate. Yeah, pirate paladin doesn't doesn't work. It just doesn't. Sorry. Sage. If I were a follower of a... Ooh. Follower of a Zooth. Hmm. That could be fun. Uh, plus one to intelligence. Hmm. Your field of study. Not much gold. And the bonuses are meh. Uh, sailor, paladin of a sea god, maybe? I don't know. Uh, soldier, paladin soldier does work, it does, uh, but uh, let's see. Spy, nah, paladin spy, I could see working that out, but. Nah, not in, the, not in this context. Urchin. Yeah, I grew up on the street and became a paladin. Uh, uh, surface of a temple of a specific god or pantheon of gods. This is a good one for a paladin. You get plus three to all healing uh, given and plus one wisdom. And you get uh, some nifty starting scrolls. That might be a good choice. Uh, and it makes a certain amount of sense for a paladin. You know, they're an acolyte of a god. Um, so, yeah, let's go with that one, I think. Uh, let's see. So you can change your skin color, like so. I could give kind of a a limited selection, but uh, it's certainly broad enough to reflect a, a range of uh, options, let's say, ethnic backgrounds. You also can, can uh, influence your complexion, uh, look older or new, younger, whatever. You, you can scroll in and see what it looks like on, on the... But, uh, let's see, hairstyle, uh, you can change your hairstyle, so, hmm, don't have to be bald there. Let's see. I like that one. 
Uh, and of course you can choose the hair color. It's cute. I like it. Uh, eyes. You can change the eye color. Ah, that's pretty neat. Uh, blue, icy blue, sort of hazel. I don't have irises. That's not creepy or anything. Red, again, not creepy or anything. Purple? Is that purple? Could be purple. She has purple eyes. Ooh, creepy. Uh, and you can, like, change the eyelid height and you know, go for the sort of narrowed eye look or the big wide sort of anime eye look um, you can change the angle of the eyes a bit and uh, eye size again kind of go more anime or more you know Ordinary, I guess. More human-ish. Uh, eye spacing. Brow depth. Hey, my head is swelling. Ooh. So, yeah. Try into that. Uh, nose. Again, same sort of thing. Cheek and jaw. Go really high on those cheeks or lower. You know. It's pretty ordinary there. Uh, make the jaw width, what have you. I uh, I get a little bit thicker there. Neck width. You know, it's, it's a thing. And then you've got your lips and ears. Lip fullness. So, you can go a little more Angelina Jolie or a little more thin-lipped. And you can change the angle of the ears. Ooh, my ears are flapping. I am easily amused. Um, and uh, then we go into your equipment. You know, what you start out with. Um, I could go for a great sword. I'd lose some AC, but uh, that's a lot of damage output. Let's see. Um, great Axe, kind of the same thing. Scimitar, uh, Long Sword instead of the Mace could work. Uh, certainly gets more damage. Um, and you get the, the shield. Uh, ooh, Morningstar. Uh, so it's more damage than the mace. Hmm. Do I want to sacrifice? Alright, move the chair a bit. Uh, do I want to sacrifice my, uh, AC at lower levels? for the damage output is really the question on that. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, let's go with it. I'm not being all tanky dink. Got splint brutes, splint armor. Da, 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 da. All right, uh, let's move on to stats. So I already start out with a couple of bonuses, so that's cool. And I have some racial bonuses that I can spend extra. So I'll go ahead and put an extra racial bonus there, and. Where? Go ahead and put that there. 
All right, so I spent the extra race for bonuses, and I've got 27 points to spend. This is pretty typical. I know that it's maybe not the most awesome thing in the universe to eliminate all your minuses, but this is a computer game, and uh, less have to have a DM willing to work with you to make that an interesting choice. Uh, so... Taking away at least the minuses is probably a good idea. <laughs> um, let's see. So, I'm going to need... Some strength. For physical attacks. And... seven extra points there. Do I want to increase my spell casting or make me a better fighter? Let's make me a better f fighter, I guess. limits to how much bonus I can put into my strength, so... Let's go with that. Okay. So this is a pretty broad built uh, paladin. Uh, not specialization, uh, specialization, eh. not specializing in any particular stat, but has a good, good set of broad stats, and I think that's probably a good way to go this time. All right, so you get your abilities, and you get five points to spend. Uh, lay on hands, kind of an obvious choice. Uh, Avenger, Bless, I could do a Blessing, no, it's not bad, or uh, Great Weapon Fighting, yeah, I probably should get that, Learn, and Protection, uh, no, I don't need a Shield Bash, how about this? Marshall, Victorious Strike, Strikes a Foe with uh, Victorious Fervor. And I've got like all the proficiencies, all of them. Uh, so, 14, 18 point points. That's an effect on the undead. Or Construct. Something. Let's, let's add some specialization here. Okay. I am going to do hella damage. And I'm going to do some blessings. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to do hella damage, and I've got a little bit of, of other things. So, it's not bad. I, I, I like that. Okay. Now, we give her a name. Uh, eh, ready to help health. I think Blaze sounds like a good choice there. Um, my 
LARPing buddies will will re recognize that I suspect. Let's see. Might I have a moment of your time? Of course. Greetings. Yes. Yeah, puckish is good. Let's go with. Neutral good. Deity. Ooh, I could get a Zooth. Uh, I kind of like that one. Uh, I could go with Corellian Lathrin or Helm. Helm's an option. Generally venerated by those who remain watchful for her enemies or danger. Helm embodies the spirit of watchfulness without regard or good or evil. Ilnathar uh, Kelimvor, Judge of the Dead, does not promote death. He presides on a passage of life or death and presides where the souls go in the afterlife. Yeah, that's not bad. They're often undead hunters. Uh, Lythander, good god of beginnings, dawn, and renewal. Tempest, um, Tempest is a good choice. God of battle, patron of martial prowess. Torm, the loyal fury, god of duty, loyalty, and bravery. Chivalrous and Steadfast, also pretty good. I think, though, I'm going to actually go with Kelimvor. Yeah. Uh, I suspect that I will be forgiven for uh, picking that god. And we accept. So, here's Blaze, my paladin, half-elven paladin. And we go into a story like so. We go for normal. And it's like it constructs the game at that point. And then you just click start game. Let no horse pull you forth and ignore the signposts beside the path. We must each blaze our own trail through the wilderness, lest we lose ourselves along the way. Legends tell that after the time of troubles, the elven goddess Sehanin Moonbo wept for those divine souls that fell in the gods' war. From her eyes fell the moon tear, a relic said to contain a moat of Sehanin's divine power. The moon tear was hidden by the elves, but not forgotten. A century ago, two brothers, one gentle and scholarly, the other brash and courageous, sought to find the lost relic. They founded an adventuring guild called the Order of the Burning Dawn and sealed their purpose with an oath to find the Moon Tear and use it to bring light to a world filled with darkness. Not long after they sealed the pact, both brothers were lost and the guild's original purpose was lost with them. Hmm. Today the guild offers equipment, shelter and paying work for adventurers looking to do a little good while they make a little coin. You are one of the Burning Dawn's newer recruits, charged with escorting a small merchant caravan along the high road between the city of Neverwinter and the lawless town of Luskan. It has been an easy journey thus far, aside from the vicious nightmares that have plagued your sleeping mind since the caravan left the city. Bad dreams are common on missions fraught with danger, but you've never had nightmares quite like this. Alright, so we have our standard opening for so many games like this, where, hey, you're already an adventurer somewhere, and you wake up in a terrible place. And that's what's going on here, as soon as it finishes loading. Uh, hey, get up, the guild hall's under attack. Who's the Hello, armored knights of some kind. Something's different about them. 
I'm hoping someone else knows more. Bellamy is calling for our help. Grab your equipment and head downstairs now. All right. Let's go now. So, so this is your standard. Uh, you can click to go to a place or interact with a thing. Uh, set up, which is fine, uh, and. Uh, you can move the camera by using your WASD keys. You can rotate it uh, using the, the Q and E. Or you can hold down with the right button and turn. So, now that we've gotten that out of the way. Uh huh. Now I can go in here. There's a chest. Take all my stuff. And go into inventory and go to add the stuff. Which, you know, I would have thought they would have put that in automatically, but whatever. Uh, and I've got some scrolls that I can add to my repertoire as it were. I'll go ahead and close that. All right, let's rotate around so I get a better look at what's going on. Now I'm going to head for the door. Report, soldier. I've begun a search of this floor, sir. <coughs> Guard the stairwell. There must be no survivors. Oh, good. So, yeah, her dialogue doesn't match the nightly thing, but whatever. And uh, I can move ahead and move back. So, you've got your different abilities down here. Lay on hands, fairly obvious. Bless, again, fairly obvious. Uh, gets a bonus to uh, you and all your friends. So, uh, if they're near you anyway. And if I press charge... And target the captain. You will pay. I kill the crap out of him real quick, like. Apparently, charge is really effective in here. <laughs> Good to know. And it's got a cooldown. Whatever. I can click on the guild hall. Oh, look. And. If you're transitioning from locations, apparently it doesn't affect the cooldown timer. Important to note. And go ahead and talk to the guy. Glad you could make it, sleepyhead. It's about time you joined us. Why would anyone attack us? Where are these All people? I know is that they caught us unawares. They're going to bring the whole building down around us. Why are you Scottish? Uh, but whatever. Uh, there weren't a lot of people here to begin with. Thank the gods. And that's Bellamy. So, to you can pause by hitting the spacebar. Let's go ahead and kill the people. All the people. No, let's let's do the blast first. Hey. And now I'm going to kill this guy. And health potion? Yes. Sweet. Die! And this guy is a cleric. And 
He's also got a bless. And a healing word. Let's do a healing word on him. And, uh... We must get out there, discover what's going on, and put a stop to it. Objections? Let's do it. I... I'm in. Okay, which one? Um, Alright, for the Barney Dawn. Dawn! Alright. So... That didn't go well. By the gods! I guess we're not getting out that way. No, I guess not. Except. Um. Any idea what's going on out there? Whatever it is, it's big. We have to get out there and help as much as we can. We can exit through the guild hall basement, but the entrance is hidden. Some kind of concealment spell. Grab the ritual skull from that chest so we can get out of here. I'll notice they don't actually direct where that ritual skull is, except if you look at your map, you get a little purple. That's that's really all you got. Sure. Go ahead and grab the chest. I didn't do it. So I can click Natty, who's our rogue. Nettie, go pick that lock. All right. Take the skull. Let's go. And yeah, the search is just what it sounds like. It slows everything down, but uh, you can see if there are any things. And let's go over here. Yay, us! Go, us! Okay. So, Nettie has got the search ability, so I will take control of Nettie to begin with. Indeed. And I can sort of wander around, checking things. There are hidden passages, there are traps. Uh, so, being able to search is a very useful of thing. Course. Good. No traps on this side or that side. Let's go talk to this guy, Arnax. I'm sure. Thank the gods he's, you're here. He's here to help you know us. What's happening. Uh, guild hall's under attack. That doesn't sound good. We should stay together until we can figure this all out. I agree. Keep but your eyes We open. should stay together. There are hidden traps in this area. Good, 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 to, good to know, I guess. And my scouty scout, uh, who scouts the scout scout, uh, can uh, detect the Traps. Yes, I know detects traps. That's why I'm doing it. Of course. Yes, I know. Alright. Now, she also has a uh, stealth ability. So, uh, and if she stealths up ahead. Uh, none of your pals follow her. Ooh, trap. I right, click on it, disarm the trap. Yeah, yes. Let's go. I always say that I don't live, Jarhild. Sad to see I was right. Jarhild is dead, so that's something. Tied to a stake and stabbed in the neck. That's charming. You can scroll in and out, so that 
allows you to get a little more detail. Go ahead and decloak so my friends will come and stand behind me. At least I think they will. Oh. Hey guys. Why don't you uh, go there? What? And do the. Okay, we we got all the people. Why is there a spider god thing on the floor, guys? Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Not thrilled with that. No. Any toy. So Nettie has the stealth, and I think I saw somebody moving up ahead. Yes, I did. So stealth. Stab. Whoops. So much for the stab. Okay. Now, Blaze is charging somebody. No! I'm killing a knight, apparently. Um, which is fine. Uh, Nettie and uh, Bell Bellamy are doing that guy. Knight. Gil. Gil's doing alright. I think we're good with our plans so far. Uh. Oh! We got hit with a net. That's something. I really do a lot of damage with that great sword. <laughs> okay. Now, Nettie, go back on search detail. Why is everything sort of fuzzy? Well, I know why. I mean, I've, I've, I've read the, the thing, but there is a reason why everything's so fuzzy. Because I've already played through this a few times, actually, on this of course. sort of tutorial part. Let's go. Die! Right. And Blaze is going to go kill that mage. Hidden blade from you. point I mean I can go through and do the everybody you, know, you do this and you do this and you do this but honestly uh, at this point there aren't a lot of options so it's it seems a bit uh, weird to go through and do that individually on each of these guys yes. but, uh, but, uh, let's go ahead and Produce flame and okay. So you can get the idea of what the plate your pockets for secrets. Yeah, that's more roguey. Probably should have picked a different voice. Indeed. 
Although the blaze that I, you know, LARPed with uh, probably of course. would have said something like that at some point because she's silly that way. Good. Bia, if you're checking this out, uh, I, uh, I make no claims as to being uh, an authority on, uh, uh, on how to run Blaze in this game, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you will approve of her Let's being go. a paladin. I think. Oh, Bryn. No. Is that... Ken? They murdered my sister. You die now, you heartless bastards! Indeed. So he's uh, a whole bundle of fun, isn't he? Of course. Traps. Traps are bad. Let's go. That's not a good sign. I'm sure the burning hole in the middle of the floor is totally not a problem. Same so impatient, you see. Play a role, mortal, and all will become clear. Stop the chatter and fight. Of course, you're obviously here to die. I shall not disappoint. Okay. Demon and terribleness, and oh look, it's all a dream. Not a flashback, but you know, it's a dream. That's why everything was fuzzy. And you're still on the road uh, to Luskin, uh, which uh, I'm sure it will be fine. Uh, nothing bad happens on the road. Ah, you're finally awake. You were scaring the horses. You were thrashing around in your sleep. The trail boss thought you were possessed. Uh. You too. Bellamy said he had the same dream I did. But I figured that damned halfling was just messing with me like he always does. Why did I you know. I asked myself the same question at least four times a day. Full of jokes he is, but he can't take it as well as he dishes it out. He's like an angry rabbit, that one. All hissing and gnashing of teeth when you rub him the wrong way. But he's a damn good soldier, and I'm glad to have him here. That nightmare I had makes me think we might be needing his blades in the coming days. Yeah. I saw a hooded figure wreathed in flame, and a horrible demon reaching through the ground from below to tear the surface apart. It felt like the end, no mistake. And there was a voice calling me, saying it was me destiny to be there. Uh... Sounds like we all Aye, have Aye, something to mention to Palan when we get to the guild house in Luskin. Maybe he'll give us a foul taste and purple concoction that bubbles loudly and doesn't do much else. Nightmares aside, we got work to do. Got to find that fool halfling and get this caravan packed up and ready to move to Luskin. The merchants are breaking camp as we speak. Most wagons are tied up and ready to go. We got a few stragglers that might need a hand getting ready. Bellamy went up ahead to scout the road. Haven't heard from him in a little while. 
He was cranky with a headache when he left, so I'm guessing he picked a fight with one of the trail scouts up there. Good. Right, he should be up the road a ways. Listen for the sound of that fool shouting curses at the sky. Okay, so standard mission set up, and we got a guild chest. So this is a bunch of stuff in the chest that I have access to. Um, I'm pretty sure these are uh, benefits of being uh, getting the deluxe version of this. Basically, some nicer things. Uh, I'm go ahead and close that. So I'm going to go ahead and equip some of these things. I think uh, because they're probably better than what I've got. Armor class seven. Uh, plus 25% bludgeoning damage resistance, plus 25% slashing damage resistance. That's pretty good. Not gonna lie. Um, and gauntlets. Cool. And helm. Ooh, I get a plus one of the wisdom saves with that. And I'm not gonna use those. Uh, I might give them to like the other fighter though um, yeah. uh, that's pretty nice but now I'm gonna stick with my, my current plan and I can add an attribute if I use this thing so that's something and All right, get back out of that. So I can go over here and uh, add to that attribute. There, there. boom! Get a plus three. Mm, yeah. Okay. So yeah, get your inventory screen, your character screen, your ability screen, your, your journal, uh, map session and you can sort of do all your saves and various other things here. Uh, I'm going to probably end this here in a few minutes but let me go ahead and show you a couple of things. So these are barrels. You can smash the barrels and sometimes they have things in them. So smash them whenever you get a chance because you can get stuff. And then you got your mission givers, uh, and so on. And you have stuff that you can sort of root through, and it's pretty standard. I'm probably going to end it here because I don't want to do too long sessions. Uh, but uh, this has been my first uh, let's play of uh, Sword Coast Legends. I hope you liked it. I'll probably be doing some more of these. Uh, eventually, once I've played through enough, I may actually uh, get into the Game Master uh, section. Uh, and uh, that is an interesting section. Let me see. Save and exit. Yeah. Okay. So, the Game Mastering section is unique on this particular game because it allows you to create your own modules and run your friends through it. Um, and I think that'll be fun to play with. Um, you got the Dungeon Master section. And uh, you can actually check, pick what your uh, icon looks like on the map when you're overseeing something. So that's something. That's kind of neat. Um, DM is not rated. That means nobody's checked my stuff out and said, yeah, this is cool. Uh, DM a player created a module for a group of adventurers. You got some randomly generated and you got your create. And downloaded modules. Oh, no modules. Buy more modules. Ooh. You can, you can, oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Um. So, yeah, I'll, I'll dig into that, I think, it, uh, on uh, some future ones. But, uh, anyways, if you like this, let me know. Uh, and if you don't, let me know that, too. Because I'd like to know if, you know, I'm just sort of annoying people.
but I figure this is very tabletop related and I'm having fun with the game so I thought I'd share uh, and uh, uh, I will also talk about the the book that is a companion to this at some point in the future I've got the book I just need to finish reading it uh, but it, so far it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting it's the first real sort of purely character option hardback book that they've released uh, since uh, the uh, original player's handbook uh, so that's something uh, and uh, I, I, as much as I like this and I don't hate Forgotten Realms I'm ready for them to move on to another setting soon uh, maybe in 2016 we'll get different settings than Forgotten Realms. Forgotten Realms is huge, there's lots of stuff to do there, that's fine, they could probably spend years putting out Forgotten Realms stuff, but, uh, you know, move the focus to a different thing, is is what I'm saying. Um, you know, I've got some of the adventures that were published for the Forgotten Realms setting, and they give some brief guidelines of how to convert them to other settings. Uh, I suspect that they will not be doing a Mistara setting as much as I would love them to. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you had fun. And I will catch you later.